Welcome back, this is Mr. Cisneros. In our previous videos, we learned how to use B-Carve and we learned how to use Artie Works to create a design that could be laser engraved. In this video, I'm gonna show you that exact same process, except now I'm using my iPad and I'm gonna be using Amazon Web Services to access B-Carve and to access Artie Works. The reason I'm making a separate video for this is because using Amazon Web Services is a little bit tricky as far as saving your files. So I'm going to show you in this video how to work with your files, how to bring files in, how to save them, and how to even upload them to Google Drive so you have access to them later. So here we go. The way we start is by opening up Schoology. So on our iPad, go to the Schoology app, and let's go to our course, Introduction to Engineering Design. And in our course at the very top, we should have this link, AWS PLTW Apps. When we click on this, it will open up a web page within Schoology. We actually want this web page to be opened in Safari. So we're going to go to the bottom left and click here on this arrow and then open in Safari. Once it's open in Safari, this window will come up. It says, oops, this link isn't working. That's all right. All we have to do is click on go to applications. When we click on go to applications, we'll be prompted with a login page. That login is for myapplications.microsoft.com. All you have to do is log in with your username being your school email and your password being your, your student ID without the three zeros. So again, your username is your school email and your password is your school ID without the three zeros. Once you've logged in, this window, this page with all these apps will come up. The app that we're looking to click on is D211SHS. Once you click on that, Amazon Web Services should open up and it should look something like this. These are all the programs that we have available to us. These are the programs that we have on the computers in our classroom lab, but here you have access to them from your iPad at home. The two programs that we're gonna focus on in this video, we're gonna focus on vCarve and we're gonna focus on Artie Works. I'm gonna start by opening up vCarve. Now, when you click on vCarve, it might take about two minutes to load up for the first time, so give it about two minutes and it should load up just like this. I'm gonna start by clicking on this maximize window to make this a little bit bigger. And then I'm just like in my previous videos, I'm gonna click on create a new file. I'm gonna set my job size to be three inch by three inch with a thickness of 0.125. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna click okay. Now, in the computer lab on a traditional PC that has vCarve, all we would have to do to bring in our image would be file, import, import bitmap. But when I do that, I see that I don't really have access to any of the files that are on my computer because this is an iPad. But we have instead, um, we have access to something called temporary files. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to upload our image that we want to trace into temporary files. So first we need to find that image that we want. So I'm gonna open up a new tab and I'm going to Google the logo or the image that I want or the design that I want. This is the one that I'm going to use to trace. So once I have it open on my iPad, I have it enlarged in Google, I'm gonna tap on the image, hold, so that this window comes up and then I'm going to add to photos. When I click on add to photos, that's gonna bring this image to my photo gallery on my iPad. I can now go back to AWS, Amazon Web Services. And up at the top, up at the top, these are buttons that Amazon Web Services gives you. And you have access to the temporary files. You can actually upload to temporary files. So I'm gonna click on this folder. And then I'm gonna click on um, temporary files. Then I'm gonna click on upload files. When I click on upload files, I have access to my photo library, which is my camera roll on my iPad. I'm going to go to Recents, and it should show up here. Let's try saving it one more time from this page. So I'm going to tap, and I'm going to add to Photos. Let's go back and see if it loads up now. I'm going to go to Photo Library. There it is. Okay, so I have to try that one more time. So now it's in my Recents. I can click on this, and I can go to Done it uploads that image to our temporary files. That's good. I'm going to close out of this window and I'm going to go to file import, just like I normally would import bitmap. 
and now that image shows up. It's in my temporary files. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go to open. Now that this is open, I'm going to go through the same steps that I did in my previous video. So I'm going to go through this fairly quick. If you want to see those steps a little bit slower, check out my previous video. I'm going to click on trace bitmap. This is a colored image, so I'm going to go to color. I'm going to choose the black because that's more dominant in the image. And then I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to go to preview, apply, and then close. I am going to get rid of the original image and by clicking here and then going to cut. That deletes my image and leaves me just with the lines that I traced. I do need a rectangle because that's going to be my border. I'm going to create the rectangle, click and drag with the rectangle tool. I'm going to let go of my click. I'm going to click apply and then close. I'm also going to make a circle with the circle tool right here. Apply and then close. Now I have all the lines that I need for my DXF. I'm going to make a big window around everything so everything is selected. You could also do Control A on the keyboard to select all. I'm going to go to File, Export, DXF. I'm going to give this a name in my temporary files. I'm going to do JDC, my initials or your initials, and then I'm going to call this logo. And then I'm just going to clarify that this is a DXF. I'm going to type DXF at the end. I'm going to click Save. And now I can open up my, my next program, which is going to be ArtyWorks. The way I open up a separate program is by going to these four uh, squares up at the top left. And then this drop down arrow or drop down menu comes up, and I can click on ArtyWorks. Now, for the first time opening up ArtyWorks, and every time you open up ArtyWorks, for whatever reason, the language default is not English. I don't know what it is, so we can go to IOUH up at the top. We can go to language and we can go to English. Another default setting that is um, set in RDWorks are the units. The units are set to millimeter. We need to change that to inch. The way we do that is we go to config, file para setting. We change DXF unit to inch. We change unit type to inch and then we click OK. Once we do that, we have it set an inch, we can bring in our DXF. Now we saved that DXF into the temporary files, so we should be able to access it by going to File, Import, and then the DXF is right there. I can click on that, I can go to Open. And now in RDWorks, the, the main thing that we're doing here is we're differentiating our lines. We're making some scan, we're making some cut. So I start by doing a Control A to select everything, and then I'm going to click on blue. Blue is going to be my scan layer. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to click my border, which I want to be a cut. I'm going to click on my circle. That's my hole for my key ring. I'm going to make that cut as well. Now you can see on the right hand side what the mode, um, what the mode is for the layers. My blue layer, I want that to be a, a scan, but it's actually set to be a cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click where it says cut. And then this window will come up under processing mode. I can change that to be scan. I'm going to click OK. And then I also want to be able to change my speed setting and my power settings for these layers. Um, this window right here is blocking those numbers. So I can just simply click on this X. That disappears and now I have access to my settings. Um, under scan, we have 30, 30 for min and max, that's good, but the speed is off. So I'm gonna change that to 350. The cut should be 80, 80, 10, which is completely off. So I'm gonna change that 80, 80, oops, and 10 for the speed. Okay. And now I have my, my line set, I have my layers set. I can save this now. So I'm gonna save this as an RLD. All we have to do is go to File, Save As. When we go to Save As, we can give this a name. Again, we're saving a temporary file. So I'm gonna save this as initials underscore logo. And then again, I'm gonna clarify here. I'm gonna call this an RLD. So I know that this can be opened in ArtyWorks. I'm gonna hit Save. Now here's the most important part. How do we get this so that it, 
is saved in our Google Drive. The way that we would do that is we would go to um, our files here, and then we would go to temporary files. Then what we would do, and because RLD is the one that we really want, because our lines and, and our cut and scan settings are set, this is the one that we want to save and download. I'm going to click on this drop down arrow here, and then I'm going to go to download. This window will come up. It says pop up windows disabled. Click here to download. I'm going to click here. It's going to give me this window. Do you want to download? Yes. Click on download. And then what happens is the download will appear right here in our download tab up in Safari at the top right. I'm going to click on that and you can see right here the RLD shows up. I'm going to click on this. This white page opens up. This is how we can send this to our Google Drive. I'm going to click on this arrow here. I'm going to click on Drive. It's going to let me choose which email. I'm going to choose my school email. It's going to let me select a folder. Select a folder. I'm going to go to my Drive. I've made a folder called PLTW. You can do the same by clicking on this window here or this button to create a folder. And I'm going to search for PLTW. This is the one that I made already. There it is. I can click on Save here. I can click on Upload. And now your RLD file is up on Google Drive. And it's still going to be in your temporary folder. But now it's not going to disappear on you. If you just left it in temporary files, after you end your session, all those files disappear. So please make sure you do upload it Follow those steps so you can upload it to Google Drive. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.